Duty uh, got on the, uh, came to the Supreme Court in 2004. I just told them that I remembered this and I almost forgot it. Um, and became Chief Justice last year, 2020. Um, so he uh, wanted an opportunity to come and see us here in Chatham, see where we work and how we work and how um, we function and, and talk to us a little bit about that. So um, I am delighted to welcome him here. He'll introduce some others. I will steal no thunder. I will tell you all that we have um, just done this in Orange County and had a great time there as well. But I'm gonna just turn it directly over to you. And how about a round of applause? Um, this is beautiful. This is a beautiful courtroom. Those of us that love historic preservation are appreciative of what you're doing with your historic courthouse. Uh, I know there was a, a lot of challenges there. But um, so, you know, why did I want to meet with everybody? It was not, believe me, to disrupt your schedule. That was the last thing I wanted to do. Um, but I wanted to get around and to tell everyone how much uh, we appreciate, uh, we in the judicial branch, we appreciate all of your efforts in ensuring that the constitutional mandates are fulfilled. Um, what, what a challenging time we've had. Uh, back in February, March of 2020, when we heard this thing, COVID, uh, many of us were hoping that this would just be a blip on the radar screen like swine flu or some of these others. Little did we know that 18 months later, we we're still going to be in the midst of trying to figure out how to meet our constitutional mandates in spite of this pandemic. So what do I mean by constitutional mandates? Um, okay, I'm licensed to carry this. This is our state constitution. If you haven't memorized it yet, I encourage you to do so. If you want a good book on it, I know one you can find. Uh, uh, John Orth and there's another co-author to it about the state constitution. Uh, but you can find it on Amazon, okay. Uh, but don't go out and spend all that money. It's not worth it. Um, our state constitution, Article 1, Section 18 says the courts shall be open. What does that mean? Does that mean we unlock the doors? Yeah. Uh, but without people, without you, uh, the promise of an open court would be hollow. Uh, we got to have judges and court reporters and clerks. We got to have magistrates, DAs public defenders or uh, defense attorneys. We've got to have attorneys for plaintiffs and uh, defendants in civil cases. And courts shall be open. Uh, it goes on to say, and justice shall be administered without favor, without denial, or without delay. Um, what, what is this justice that we're talking about? Uh, Article 1, Section 1, should be familiar to all of us. It's mostly taken right out of our Declaration of Independence. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all of us are created equal and endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights. Among those rights are life and liberty, uh, pursuit of happiness. Uh, we added to it, uh, everyone's entitled to the fruits of their own labor. We just came through Labor Day recognizing the dignity of work, the importance of work. So those are our constitutional promises, and as Martin Luther King Jr. famously said, that's the promissory note on the bank of all of America that everyone is entitled to. Well, what happens when life or liberty, property, what happens when those things are threatened? Well, we have our general courts of justice. Uh, without them, folks would resort to self-help and you lose a foundation of a civilized society. So justice is to be administered without favor. What does that mean? Without favor, everybody treated the same. I have on my lapel of my 
wonderful wife, Macon, my much better half, uh, will be handing out lapel pins to members of the judicial branch that would like them. And the seal of the judicial branch is Lady Justice, and she's blindfolded. She can't see who comes before, rich, poor, powerful, not powerful. Everybody to be treated the same. I was talking to a group of fifth graders. They said, hey, Justice Newby, what's it like to wear a blindfold and work all day? Well, a bit literal, but they get it. We have got to ensure that whoever walks in the door of this courthouse will be treated with dignity and respect and honor, uh, but that they will be administered justice without favor, that justice will be the same for everybody that walks in the door, without favor, without denial. Access to justice continues to be an issue for all of us that are part of our branch. Um, those of you, I don't know, do we have any clerks in here? Uh, deputy clerk, assistant clerk? Um, thank y'all. Uh, y'all are really the face of justice. I mean, every now and then folks may see a judge. Uh, very rarely do they see an appellate judge, okay? That's good for them. But they see y'all. Y'all are the face of justice. Y'all are the people that have to interact with this. And we all know that people that are represented by attorneys have better access to justice than those who want to represent themselves. So how do, how do we help these folks? Uh, I'll be talking a little bit about at least one of the initiatives that we have to try to address this. Um, but without favor, without denial, and without delay. Open without delay. How do you do that in the midst of a pandemic? How do you do that to protect all the essential workers in the courthouse? And at the same time, um, keep the courts open, protect the public, and keep the courts open. And that's really why I came up with this idea of trying to visit all 100 courthouses, was to say thank you. And to say thank you for helping us get through this pandemic. Little did I know that we would be right back in the midst of it. Um, maybe a little wiser because of our experiences. Boy, it's tough. It is challenging. Um, just what a disease. I mean, we've all known people that had COVID, tested positive, nothing. It's like a cold. And we've known people who tested positive and died. People that I never would have guessed um, based on their physique and all these other things. You know, it's like, how in the world? So it's a real problem that we have to live with and through at the same time meeting our constitutional mandate that the courts will be open. So the reason that I was wanting to come was to say thank you for getting us through the first portion of the pandemic. And now thank you for seeing us through yet another incredibly challenging time. Uh, nonetheless, I want to say thank you. Particularly, frankly, uh, how, you know, I appreciate our, our judges but I really appreciate our frontline workers, our clerks, deputy clerks, assistant clerks, our trial court administrators, our uh, bailiffs, our magistrates, the folks that are out there uh, allowing the courts to do its business. Uh, and I just really appreciate uh, all y'all's work and sacrifices to ensure that that occurs. And like I said, being the face of justice, uh, most folks, uh, you know, uh, when they uh, uh, understand that they've got business at the courthouse and it might be the death of some, uh, one of their relatives and they're having to open an estate, it uh, might be uh, a traffic ticket, it could be something far more serious. Uh, but I don't care. Generally, folks are not like, oh, great, I get to go to the courthouse today. This is going to be fun. It's like, oh, I can't believe I have to do this and I'm really worried and of course you on the front lines of the clerk's office you see all these different emotions that folks are having to deal with as they encounter uh, the justice system uh, but y'all are the ones that they remember uh, uh, the attorneys yes uh, the court officials but you know the, the folks that they actually interact with so thank you thank you all all for ensuring that our constitutional mandates are fulfilled. Um, I also wanted to update everybody about this thing called eCourts, all right? 
Um, so I'm a dinosaur, freely admit it, okay? So I'm gonna talk about stuff I don't know a whole lot about other than I've been exposed to it a great deal. Uh, so uh, I didn't interview any of the potential contractors. I didn't sign a contract on behalf of the branch, but eCourts is mine, I own it. It's gonna be part of my legacy for better or for worse. And so um, my uh, instruction to the folks at AOC uh, is we are not gonna roll out a product until it's ready for prime time. Uh, nobody's gonna be a guinea pig. It will be a product that will work as it's designed to work from citation, from filing of a, a civil complaint, all the way through the appellate process. And all those functions have got to be tested and all those functions have got to be working uh, so that whether it's law enforcement, uh, uh, using the law enforcement portion of it, whether it's uh, attorneys using their portion, judges, whatever it is, everything's got to be working before we bring up the first pilot districts. The pilot districts are to test an already proven product. It's not to create a product that hasn't been finished. So uh, we've already postponed it at least six months. My best guess, guess is January of 2022 for the pilot districts, which are uh, Way, Harnett, Lee, Johnston. Uh, but it will not. This is the part I want you to be assured. Uh, nobody's going to be a guinea pig for this. It will not come out until it's ready uh, to do the function that we've been told it'll do. Now, the good news is I've met with justices from around our nation who have used the vendor Tyler Technology, and they say that their experiences with Tyler have been good. That's a good thing. Uh, the bad thing, the, the, the challenging part, is they've never done anything as vast as our judicial system. And I was shocked at that because I talked to justices from uh, Georgia and Indiana and some of these uh, uh, states that are comparable in size. And I was like, how come your system is not as big as ours? And they say, we don't have a unified court system. I was like, what? They said, okay, so I, I, people, I would explain to people what a unified court system did. Before a unified court system, we had the Andy Griffith show, right? And so you have the sheriff who becomes the uh, magistrate who, you know, he, he does all these different functions. We had justice of the peace and all this kind of thing. Well, now we have this unified court system. We have a district court system. And I'm so grateful that we have the unified court system. But by being unified, we are the biggest project that they've ever undertaken to go from a paper system to what will be a paperless system. So anyway, uh, I'm certainly try, uh, glad to try to answer questions you might have about e-courts and e-filing. I will say that um, one of the things that we're trying to do to help pro se folks when they come in, and, uh, uh, we've got this uh, uh, application called Guide and File. Uh, it's now guide and print, but it um, has product, has forms that are approved by the AOC, particularly in areas of family law and things like that, that uh, at least folks are filing, hopefully, or can file coherent uh, documents as opposed to just kind of making them up on their own. Uh, so that's already out there. The website is getting lots of activity. It's for uh, pro se folks, but it's for attorneys too if they want simple um, so that's my e-court uh, update. Um, uh, again, uh, I just wanted to reiterate how much all the folks uh, at the Administrative Office of the Courts appreciate what you do uh, here in Chatham County. Um, when I became Chief Justice, one of the things I emphasized to the Administrative Office of the Courts is that they are to be the most user-friendly government bureaucracy that there is. Um, there is not a general court of justice in the Administrative Office of the Courts. We don't do justice there. Justice is done by y'all. What do we do? We assist and equip. That's our job, assist and equip. And 
If y'all have an issue, you should call up AOC and their answer should be uh, yes, now what can we do to make this happen? Okay. If you're not getting that kind of response, uh, please let Director Heath know. If you are, you can let me know. Compliments come to me, complaints go to <laughs> Director Heath, just to be clear. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, I, I, it's just hard for me to fully express how much I appreciate all that you do. Uh, I will say this about uh, your senior resident. Uh, when I became Chief Justice, one of the things uh, that I was very uh, passionate about was being sure that uh, the judges had the tools that were available to them to do justice, the ones that we had developed during COVID. Uh, one of the things that has come out of COVID is now you can uh, in the uh, privacy of your own home, you can watch the Supreme Court uh, um, arguments uh, from my 97 and a half year old mother. That's one of her favorite TV shows, okay? So, uh, but uh, uh, that's an open court thing. People of the state should always have had access to uh, uh, the arguments at the their Supreme Court. It's also all the Court of Appeals arguments are live streamed. You try a case, you know it's on appeal, you want to see the appeal, you may not be handling it, you can watch it being argued uh, at any of the appellate courts. Um, I have uh, uh, personally been to a courtroom of the future. Uh, uh, one of the things AOC did is to uh, use COVID money to uh, get all the technological equipment needed uh, for the courtroom of the future, which actually could be live streamed if we wanted it to be. Uh, and they've got enough for all 100 counties. So when y'all get ready for your courtroom of the future and you decide where you want it, uh, you can certainly be in touch with Judge Heath and say, hey, we, we want this done. Uh, Wilmington, New Hanover County has one right now uh, that they that has really been the model for the system. Uh, they built the new Juvenile Justice Center and that's really the centerpiece of their juvenile justice system. You know, the idea, again, is an access to the courts where uh, we're able to do certain hearings virtually, certain witnesses virtually, uh, that type of thing. But Judge Bedore was instrumental in helping us come up with the proposals with regard to what technological advances we had made uh, during that, uh, during COVID <coughs> that we needed to keep. And the other thing I'll say uh, with regard to your uh, uh, Chief District Court Judge, your senior resident, uh, certainly your district attorney, the other stakeholders, uh, it's my belief uh, that they meet regularly and they discuss best ways to uh, approach things with regard to your courthouse, uh, uh, you know, mask policies, all these other things. Uh, that's vital and frankly it doesn't go on anymore. If it did, I wouldn't get the phone calls and emails I get where folks are not playing nice. And I want to say, come on, y'all play nicely, please. Uh, but it's the communication, it's being willing to listen. Uh, you know, we just came from Orange County where the clerk there was telling me about all these brilliant ideas that their deputy and assistant clerks had come up with during uh, the COVID situation to help their office remain open and safe and do all the things that have to be done. So, uh, you know, I, I, I truly look at, you know, the judicial community, and particularly the courthouse community as a courthouse family, and we need everybody contributing your ideas. Uh, sometimes they'll be accepted and sometimes they won't be followed, but, you know, uh, everybody deserves to have their voice heard as you have these ideas, and I know uh, as I've spent time uh, with your senior resident today, I know that's his heart as well, to be sure that uh, everybody feels like that they are at least being heard with whatever their concerns may be. Um, that's kind of what I had to present to y'all. I am uh, more than happy to take questions. I will have already introduced my wife. Uh, uh, make, I, I know Chatham County, you guys are like next door uh, to Chapel Hill, so there's probably a little bit of Carolina Blue over this way. Uh, my wife's a double tar hill. We met at law school at, at Chapel Hill. Uh, I have to confess that I came from the darker side. And uh, anyway, the best thing that happened to me happened at, at UNC where I met my wife. Uh, my 
chief of staff and general counsel is Liz Henderson. She's from a neighboring county called Randolph. Uh, I actually was born in Randolph County. Um, the only justice in the history of the state from Randolph County. Not sure what that says about Randolph. Nonetheless, <laughs> uh, uh, Liz, being from Randolph, she and I kind of speak the same, same language, so that's good. Um, I know uh, Liz has some uh, recognitions from the, uh, the clerk's office uh, staff, uh, and then Macon has the lapel pins for anybody in the judicial branch that 